It was noontime today in the center of Beijing when a man walked to the middle of the avenue of eternal peace. All right, welcome back to the Survival and Basic Badass Podcast, Kevin and Chuck. Today, well, we're going to talk about the Prepper Library. Basically, the books that you need when the lights go out. Um, You know, the SHTF situation there. Basically, the idea is everybody uses YouTube and the internet as their, you know, big resource for you know go-to information and right youtube is an amazing source right Mm -hmm. i mean you want to build something you go to youtube you're you know master mechanic you're you know whatever and it works great and we love youtube and you know i i learn a ton of stuff off youtube it's weird you know I, i know like stuff on how to plant how to grow how to you know build something how to fix your car it really is great you know, I always make a point, too, when we're talking about everyday carry is carrying your smartphone just because you can you can Google, you can YouTube anything you want to do, you know, and figure it out immediately. Anything. Right. But actually having hard paper, uh, you know, things can be a big asset if the lights went out. And also, I hate to say it, a lot of people and, and this isn't the best way to do things. But a lot of people, their survival plan is, well, I have that book. I'll look at it when I have all that free time because I won't have to go to work. So I'll have time to read the manual. Um, The idea is you want to peruse that stuff beforehand. Mm -hmm. You want to have an understanding of, you know, how things are going to be before in case there's materials you need, supplies you need, things to, you know, make things go a little easier where you're like, oh, step one is go buy a bunch of canning lids that are different than the ones that you have, you know, or or whatever. You need an axe. Um, you need oil for your chainsaw. You know, these things are important to figure out beforehand. However, having a book and the resource for things that you might not know were going to come up, and also having the books to kind of plan out your life like right now, like, hey, if I'm building a wall, out of stone and there's an excellent resource out there about building stone walls. It'd be awesome if I had that book right now. Right. So, all right. Where do you want to begin here? Uh, Well, let's start with um, homesteading. Okay. Um, We've got a couple of different sections here. We'll go through them each. Um, Homesteading, I think is really, um, really one of the most important uh, sections in this. You know what I mean? It It covers a lot of the stuff when it comes to, basically setting up uh, an area, your area, that'll help yep. provide the most amount of food and the most amount of resources for you, right? So when it gets into that stuff, um, you know, a big a big asset is going to be a- being able to grow your own food, you know, uh, get your own water, that sort of stuff. So I think homesteading is a, is a good way to start start the podcast. Right. No, I think that's an excellent place to start. Um, so my go-to um, is The Self-Sufficient Life and How to Live It by John Seymour. Um, right. So this book is pretty sweet. It's um, got like how-to instructions for just about everything, making cheese, butchering animals. When I first butchered a chicken... It was this book laid out on the back of the pickup truck. Yeah. Well, um, you know, on the tailgate, cutting it open, there's like blood stains all over the page to this day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah and I'm, but going through, but it, and he talks about fences, how to set up your yard, where to place things. Um, I got to say that honestly, if I had only one book for prepping, that would be it is the self-sufficient life. It uh, takes you through all the steps and is just an excellent resource for, you know, how to's. Uh, do you have anything on that or any? Yeah, other? well, I mean, one one thing that I, I would la- like to point out is is um, that butchering uh, that you just mentioned. That's yeah. not something you're going to find on YouTube. For some reason, it seems like they scrub anything that's got any kind of blood, whether it's human blood or not, you know, Um 
go on YouTube and try and try and uh, find a video on butchering a deer. It's it's hard to do. Um, so any kind of uh, butchering that would be something that even even when the powers powers on and and nothing's going on, it would be good to have a book on on just how to butcher animals. And you know, you do it a few times and you kind of get the hang of it. But really, it takes right if it's not something you do right. Then, yeah, so the complete book of butchering, smoking, curing, and sausage making. How to harvest your livestock and wild game. Um, and that one is by, I don't know who wrote it. it just says Voyager Press. Okay. Um, and But that one is an uh, excellent resource on... Uh, you know, on butchering that one actually takes you through like how to build smoke houses. And plus it also had the kind of unusual game, you know, like doing rabbits and squirrels. And I guess they have raccoons and, you know, all the little things that may not be in your standard go to, uh, right. You know, books, not in your normal wheelhouse. Yep. All right. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about, um, Self-defense, that's always a, a fun one. Um, now, my favorite uh, favorite self-defense book, when it comes down to it, is is the old classic, The Tao of Jeet Kune Do. Yes. Which is written by Bruce Lee. Now, yes. you might think that, uh, you know, a book is not a great resource for, for learning how to uh, do hand-to-hand -hand combat. And I would generally say, yeah, that's right. But when you read through the book, he really has a lot of uh, small pointers that you wouldn't even think of. Um, just basics, uh, basics, how to throw a punch, you know, how to how to, you know, throw a kick. Those types of things, um, you know, you can go to a gym and learn and, and practice. And, and over time, you'll pick up those little tips. But if you can have uh, if you can have just those little tips ahead of time, um, you know, it'll. it'll help you out when you're practicing in your basement on a on a you know heavy bag or something um you don't you don't maybe you don't have time to go to the mma gym you know you don't have right. time to go to the boxing gym you got to teach yourself and and that book really has a lot of uh, a lot of good points to it right i mean obviously hands-on is the best but you know mm -hmm. you do what you got to do and like you said time um i know that i i actually looked into the the brazilian jiu-jitsu place here and you know, the only morning classes they had were beginners. And I'm like, that's great. But after the first three months or whatever, then where do we go? You know, and it and then they're kind of limited. Anyway, my other go to and I do have Taoji Kundo. Mm -hmm. is, the next go to is Killer Get Killed by Rex Applegate. Mm -hmm. and that one is kind of more like alternative measures of fighting like it's a little right. less on the rules but i gotta say bruce lee's pretty less on the rules also right he definitely uh isn't confined but you know that has no problem uh this one you know jabbing your thumb in somebody's eye or uh sure you know stabbing a knife in somebody's temple you know you do what you gotta do right you gotta that's right that's right take it um, through there are also a lot of uh great books on on knife fighting um I wouldn't I wouldn't give you any uh, specific examples just because there's so many books and I I wouldn't know which one is the best one to, to go for but um you know there are a, a lot on knife fighting and I you know to me that's one of my that's one of my uh, my favorite practices I don't think I'm ever gonna get into a knife fight and I never plan on it but you never know what's gonna happen I always right. have a knife so got to be ready right. Back to kind of round off uh, homesteading. I know we moved into fighting there a little bit, but uh, Secret Garden of Survival by Rick mm. Austin. That's um, a good one. Yeah. That one's another great uh, selection there. Right. That's, and, you know, and that would be a great book if, uh, if you're living in like the suburbs and you've got a lot of neighbors and stuff. Um, basically, it's how to set up your yard to grow, grow food without being real obvious you know what i mean right. a lot of without it a big kind of like bushes in. and right yeah it's not your traditional rows and normal gardening um and he well actually to be honest it is more traditional it's less american style gardening how about that yeah um, maybe go. native american style gardening 
Um, it is kind of a commitment though, that book, uh, a lot of the stuff is kind of involved and you're going to put some real effort into setting it up. It's one of those kind of set it and forget it, but the set it is like, you know, four or five months of, uh, outside every day, setting up your yard to be the, the right way, you know, but right. Hey, if you want free food for the rest of your life, that's, that's kind of a good trade off, you know, uh -huh. that, that's not that bad. Where, where are we heading next? All right, let's uh, let's go to medical. Okay. Yeah. So uh, a couple of books from there is you know one of the things that you might want to uh, look into when it comes to to survival medicine that sort of stuff is um, natural uh, natural remedies. You know what I mean? Yeah. You might not have access to you know to the drugstore to the pharmacy. Um, uh, sur survival medicine handbook and the preppers medical handbook. Both are pretty good for that. Um, when it comes to foraging, there you go. S the survival medicine handbook. Um, yeah. So that's, that's really, uh, uh, a great book when it comes to having a, having a forage your own, your own stuff or even growing your own stuff. You know, right. I know I, I grow a lot of medic medicinal plants, uh, around the yard. And, you know, some of them, be honest with you, natural medicine, if, if a natural medicine actually works, it's just called medicine. You know right. what I mean? Most right. of the time that those natural remedies are, eh, they kind of, maybe they kind of help out, but they're not really, uh, they're not as good as, uh, as Valium and Prozac, you know? <laughs> oh, um, uh, garlic is great, but it's not the same as antibiotics from, uh, you're killing me. So the big thing with the survival medicine handbook is it is written by a doctor and his wife. His wife's a uh, nurse practitioner. It's uh, Joseph Alston and or Joseph Alton mm -hmm. and his wife, Amy. Um, but they talk about all the stuff that is accessible to you that you can buy over the counter and, you know, just get, you know, or, or where to get it or where to get an alternative to what you might get from a doctor. And he basically does mention a lot of the household remedies. However, once again, it is one of the books that you want to check out before things get bad. Right. Because he does recommend a lot of things that you could buy and have on hand that would be great substitutes. You know, so if you have access to Walmart now, you can kind of plan ahead. And he actually outlines things that you might want to get to make your life a little bit easier um, as far as home medical care. Right. Uh, if you are maybe a nurse, something like that, or you know a nurse, or you have maybe a nurse in your mutual assistance group or prepper stuff like that, um, a book you want to talk them into or you might want to get if you want to go there is emergency war surgery mm -hmm. and this is kind of crazy they kind of talk about all your field applications and things you could do that you can improvise with what's on hand you know it's a big thing right. like that where you can actually you know pull things off you know like that so th those are my two go to um, to be honest, even the Boy Scout handbook has a great first aid section. Right. Um, that covers all your basics. Yeah. And also, you know, I, I would recommend, I know we're talking about books, but I would recommend keeping up with your first aid and CPR classes. Um, they're definitely, uh, definitely helpful. Yeah. It's a Boy Scout manual from the day. Mm hmm. From back in the day. Back in the um, day. Another one that's that's pretty good is a uh, medical toxicology of natural substances. Um, that's um, that's it's more of a uh, reference book, um, and it's you know it's generally for doctors and nurses, you know. Uh, but it's definitely worth having around, having having on hand. Um, you got anything else for for the medical library I'm here? First aid. I, I try and keep it simple. All right. Uh, let's talk about um, uh, survival, oh. survival books. Some of my favorites, and I know I know Chuck's got a couple of a uh, couple of different ones than I do, but I think we've got a few of the same ones. The SAS Survival Handbook, uh, but John, by John Wiseman. That one uh, is definitely an interesting 
interesting book to, to flip through and it's an interesting book to read. It's kind of like an adult version of the Boy Scout handbook. Right. If you will. It's kind of the Boy Scout handbook with added military applications. Um, right. There are a lot of, you know, uh, boat building, you know, uh, kind of shelter building, fire starting, all that stuff that you get out of the Boy Scout handbook is in there. But then it takes it into some more crazy things that get a little more, you know, on top. So John Lofty Wiseman, something. Mm-hmm. SAS handbook. Now, I do have another, uh, the SAS Urban handbook. This one's a little hokier, and I don't know, like, what, but he does talk about kind of surviving in the city kind of thing. And, you know. Some little, again, kind of, uh, I don't know, different ways of thinking in the city and dealing with people. How about that? Right, right. All right. How about the um, uh, the official U.S. Army guide? That one is a, a pretty handy book, and I, I have that one, and I I go through it every once in a while. But the truth is that one that one sits on the shelf a little bit more than some of the other ones. Um, but there's a, there's quite a few of these survival books that are, uh, that are really great, but ultimately I would recommend that you get out in the woods. If you plan on being in the woods in the future, I recommend getting out in the woods and, you know, figuring some of this stuff out with hands-on practice, uh, yeah. starting a fire with a, um, with a, uh, like a, a bow drill, drill or, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a real nightmare if you don't know what you're doing. You know, right? You find some soggy wo- wood that has been rained on for the past six months and try and start a fire with it. Good luck, man. You really gotta, you really gotta know what you're doing and and be able to find the right stuff to get started with that sort of thing. And I always recommend yeah. that you carry a, a couple of cigarette lighters in your in your pe- in your pack. You know, it's right. It's not a not an easy thing to do is starting starting a fire from scratch. No, no, and and that's it. A lighter makes it easy. You don't have to, you know, worry about finding the right dry stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, super dry. Still need dry, but right. not you know not over the top. Um. All right. What's the next category? Like, dude, I have like fifty books on my right. Yeah, here, yeah. So I'm ready for anything. <laughs> ready to go. How yeah, about how about bush? I got it all. Um, bushcraft. Bushcraft one hundred and one. Uh, Dave, uh, Cantonbury. Um, that's a great book, a great thing to have. Um, great thing. Look at, look at Chuck is right on, right on point here. Right He's on. got it Kevin in his mentions pocket. I got yeah. it. Um, this has, yeah, all your, your basics. It covers knots. It covers, you know, navigation. It covers tree identification, it covers trapping and, um, rope cordage, uh, containers for cooking, uh, shelter, combustion, setting up camp, tools, how to set up your pack. Right. So they kind of go through it all there. And and the 101 is is a valid point because a lot of that stuff is basic things. Um, but, you know, the basic stuff is we're missing a lot of basic stuff just in our regular use. Now, Chuck's got yeah. the advanced bushcraft book. Advanced bushcraft. Now that's a little bit that, deeper in, right? That goes a little bit it, further. It, it goes there. You're kind of making some custom tools, you know, make making your, your, uh, you know, bowls and things like that, you know, setting time with the sun and, you mm-hmm. know, things like that. It gets a little deeper. Right. Right. Uh, how about, how about shelters, shacks, and shanties? Do you have that? One? I don't think you'd have that. One. I don't David have Beer. that. that, um, that that's not me. Yeah, it's basically uh, that's basically a survival shelter building. Um, it's got a lot of a uh, lot of good graphics. You know, I should point this out, though. When you're looking for books on a lot of these things, you want something with color photographs, especially when we get yes. into foraging. We're going to be talking about yes. that. You don't want to get a cheap, uh, you know, cheap black and white book. You want to be able to find something that uh, that's going to be thorough with the Yale illustrations um you know somebody at my level like i I need pictures mm -hmm. right you know the words they're hard if i can just have a lot of pictures that makes everything better right right nobody wants to read a book that doesn't have any pictures in it 
That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Bunch of words. Words. Crazy. Words are hard. How about the Outdoor Survival Handbook? Um, that's when I picked up off the internet. So I don't even know if it's if it's a very common book, but right. um, like a mainstream. Yeah, yeah. But I I found it pretty pretty handy okay. and pretty interesting. Um, you want to uh, move into foraging, or do you I got like anything foraging. else on on bushcraft? Nope, nope. Foraging works. All right. So the first one on the list is uh, nature's garden. A guide to identifying, harvesting, and preparing edible wild plants. Um, that one is uh, it's good because it it do, like I said, it does have a lot of illustrations in it. Um, when it comes to identifying plants, there's a lot of plants that look similar to one another. You know yes. what I mean? And and you can be poisoning yourself. Same thing with uh, you know, when we talk about foraging you really need to find books that are specific to your area. You know what I mean? Right. Um, Southwest and Northeast, it's completely different set of, right. of things that you're going to be looking for. Right. Right. So, you know, when it comes to foraging mushrooms, uh, plants that, you know, anything, uh, you want to find something, something specific to your area. Uh, when it okay. comes to mushrooms, it turns out you can eat any mushroom you find any one. You can, huh? Yeah. Some of them will make you uh, poop until you die. Well, yeah, there's but, that. Yeah. So, or hallucinate uh, or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so, most, and this is a lot, something a lot of people don't know. There's a lot of hallucinogenic, uh, genetic, hallucinogenic mushrooms out there that will make you trip. Like, it's not just the, you know, the psilocybin mushrooms. A lot of them will. But also, you'll poop yourself to death while you're hallucinating so wow oh, there's that you know uh just something to keep in mind <laughs> with, with a, when it comes to mushrooms it what you want to do is you want to mash it up and rub it on your skin right okay. wait eight hours mm -hmm. then rub it on your lips right and if it starts tingling don't eat it that's a no-go if it doesn't start tingling just take a little bite and then wait another eight hours it can take you weeks before you can actually eat these mushrooms or you can just be bad learn how to uh identify plants right or you can with the proper book or yeah. training right you can do a little bit of work and i would recommend even if you have a book when it comes to mushrooms even if you have a book find somebody that knows what they're doing to go out with you and, yeah and i think there are a out. couple of go-to staples that are safe but mm -hmm. i'm not the authority to tell you about it so but there are local foraging classes which would be awesome um I, I know I always liked uh, Steve Brill. There's Wild Man Steve Brill in uh, yeah. New York City has a big foraging tour, and they actually take you through Central Park, and he like makes a salad out of you know stuff they find there. But mm -hmm. again, foraging is kind of a seasonal thing. Usually, um, you know, very limited it, it, right. when things aren't green and you know blooming and and whatever. So, I also have uh, Peterson's Field Guide. Edible Wild Plants, Eastern Central North America. Uh, that actually has a lot of pretty detailed drawings, but then it has a section of about 30 pages with, you know, color photos was pretty good. I have a simpler one called Backyard Foraging by Ellen Zakos. Mm -hmm. That one, uh, that one had a lot of color pictures, but I don't know. It was kind of more your traditional stuff, like, kind of the stuff that i already knew i could eat mm -hmm. like you're not breaking out new you know exotics to me right but i gotta say the staples are really you know where you want to be you know mm -hmm. the wife just found a big uh mulberry tree in the backyard and we were all excited about that she made some kind of pie or something and all it, right it's hard to catch it because you have like two days before the birds go in and you know right right and yeah, no, I've got a whole big batch of of raspberries and blackberries in the in the right. backyard, and I I get like six berries out of the eighteen bushes that are back there. Yeah, next to my next to my barn, I have a what I believe to be a raspberry plant, and so I kind of let it like propagate. And now I either have a raspberry field or a poison ivy field, or all poison ivy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't really know. I don't really know what I made back there, but I haven't seen any berries. I just yeah. know that I, I let all this stuff grow that's, and I'm really screwed now. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like poison ivy, doesn't it? 
<laughs> well, yeah, it's a delicate dance. Yeah, those raspberry bushes and that poison ivy, man, it looks right. It looks exactly the same. Year, it's like, yeah, it's the same thing. I don't mm-hmm. know. All right. Um, Edible Wild Plants, a North American field guide to over 200 natural foods. Uh, that's that's a good one. Uh, it's thorough. It's it's a thick book. You know, there's a lot in there, a lot of info. But again, you want to find things that are specific to your area when it comes to foraging. You yeah. need to go to your local bookstore or go online and find books that are for your area. Um, you know, if you're in, in Denmark, listening to this podcast, don't get the, the North, North American, American guide. No. guide, Right. So, you know, it, it's really, like I said, it's really specific to your area yeah. and you want to find the right books for the right area. Yeah. All right. Um, I will point out with the raspberries though. I took a picture with my phone with the little Google app uh-huh. and it said raspberries or poison ivy. So they even that like, thanks that's the app couldn't help you out. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> yeah, it's how it goes sometimes, you know. Yeah, I don't know, dude. It's the world I live in, you know. It's one of those. Yeah. All right. Um, do you get anything else as far as uh, books go? Oh, I had, dude. I have a stack. All right. So, well, let's go through the rest of them that you got there. Right. These are kind of less specific. Um. You know, I mean, they're less in a category. Uh, beekeeping, the complete mm. step-by-step book of beekeeping. This thing, yeah. I got a David Cramp. Now, I've never done beekeeping, so how can I say that it's the perfect book? But I got to say, they have step-by-step pictures of like every part of the process you can imagine. So yeah. I expect good things. Yeah. Um, it looks awesome. I've never seen something so detailed. There are very few books that get me excited where I'm like, yeah, this, I could do this, you know? Mm-hmm. And I feel like that, that might be one of them. I have another yeah. one. Now, now actually yeah. I, I listened to a couple of uh, podcasts on beekeeping. Yeah. And I'll tell you something, man, they are the most boring podcasts I've ever uh, listened to. Not they're like just the survival and basic badass. No, nah, it's just, you know, I mean, well, I, you'd want to like and subscribe they right are information. Now so you don't yeah. miss an episode, right? That's right. That's right. right. They are full of information. It's just the people that, that do podcasts on beekeeping. They're just, they speak so softly. And like they they're on like NPR. Very calm pe- yes. It's like NPR. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every one of those podcasts is. All right. So, there's a million books on log cabins and cabin building. And I got to say, I love, you know, looking at the different log cabins and how they do stuff. And I'm like, Oh, that's a great idea. So I have one though, that I really kind of go back to over and over again called cabins just says cabins across the top, a guide to building your own nature retreat by David and Jeannie styles. Mm -hmm. And this one, they, uh, they're pretty awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. But anyway, it's got like all the step by step, how to notch logs, how to, you know, make your own shingles, how to split logs, how to make doors out of logs, how to do, you know, different stuff. They take you through, you know, and the pegs and, you know, post and beam stuff and how to do it. So excellent resource for that. If that's something you're into. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've got a, a bit of a fetish with watching uh watching oh, videos on people building like log hey, cabins there. You see these <laughs> this people in like what i i just watched one this girl I, I assume it's like thailand or something just based uh, on the foliage and everything around her you know and man three years off grid you know building an off grid you know shelter or something now uh, she has all these like planed boards that she's just putting in place and i'm like well we didn't see any tree cutting or planing right or, I, I don't understand it really but um, I have one, the backyard blacksmith traditional techniques for the modern Smith by Lorelai Sims. Now my wife uh-huh. says it's that girls can write books on blacksmithing. What? And I got to say though, dude, it's freaking, she is on top of it. It really does have like all the steps and, and pictures. Maybe it takes the novice dumb guy like me and then brings it up to, you know, to, to better level. So that, that might be something to go to now. I have now, I think we're moving into my crazy collection. 
All right. And, and crazy like is always good. So we got the Black Book of Revenge by John nice. Jackson. Um, I I remember reading some out, of that book, and it was box. kind of fucked up. Yeah, there's a lot of fucked up shit in there. Yeah. Um, now these, I think there's a lot of these. One, are one part of that book wasn't one part of that book like catching a bunch of snakes and putting it in somebody's house. Oh yeah, no, they. He's like, oh yeah, I remember this one time, or maybe that's the Black Book of uh, Booby Traps. Uh, I remember this one time that we take you know pit vipers in Afghanistan or something, and we tie them by the tail and hang it from the roof, and people walk into the dark barn. And the snake's right there in their face and, you know, bites mm-hmm. him in the face. And he's like, great. one time it bit me in the face. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> the Black Book of Booby Traps by Lyle Whitney. Mm, that one, yeah. those two kind of came together at the same time there. Um, the Clandestine Operations Manual for Central America is mm-hmm. definitely a nice go to is that a cia that is a cia pamphlet yeah and they uh it kind of makes you understand what kind of shadiness our governments were really willing to do yeah that one was uh that one was a bit fucked up because it really it talks about overthrowing governments and oh and yeah shit like that and they're like here here's how you rile up the population mm-hmm. and then kind of slip out and let them do the dirty work so you don't right. get you know spend your life in jail um, right. <laughs> get everybody a, else all riled up and and do the do the hard stuff and and you just uh you just get things started get right. things in motion i have a u.s navy u.s navy and marine corps seer manual survival evasion resistance and escape handbook i gotta yeah. say i had higher expectations for that one not as great mm-hmm. um Eddie the Iron's best new lock picking design. Huh? Yeah, that's something that that does does come up every once in a while. Every once in a while, I mean, also bolt cutters are are a great uh, great tool when it comes to picking locks. Right, and then we have my favorite and the go to for all the old school from like the eighties. Like if you grew up with like the Anarchist Cookbook, things like that, you guys probably remember Ragnar Benson. Right. And Ragnar Benson is the man and just any of his books. Sometimes they're a little less detailed, but just it makes you think outside the box. So we have man trapping Mm -hmm. and that one definitely was a great go to. Right. I have uh, Ragnar's 10 best traps. That's for like fish and animals. And I got to say is great. Um. Ragnar's Guide to the Underground Economy. You never mm-hmm. know. You never know. Um, but again, it's the underground economy in 1980. So, right. you know, that's a little something. Then you have the Ragnar's Action Encycl- Encyclopedia of Practical Knowledge and Proving Techniques. Mm-hmm. And there's both a uh, one and two on that. So, ah, look at that. Y- you don't want, you know, to miss the whole collection. That has yeah. how to take out helicopters, how to avoid surveillance, um, you know, how to recognize FBI agents over cops and how deep cover people are and, you mm-hmm. know, all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you ever are really getting into like um, selling or smuggling drugs, those are Ragnar's some books to Shugai. go for. Yeah. Yep. All right. Now I have Tracking Humans by David Diaz. Mm-hmm. Now, tracking Humans, this guy's committed, all right? And and maybe he should be committed, but he talks about, like, he's all in. Like, he talks about you should be pooping in your bu- yard and then go out and check it every day so you know what, you know, it's like. How, if you're, how you know, human shit after ages. After a day. Human poop after two days, human poop <laughs> after a week. Smell yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know that I'm thick. Yeah, but I don't then, know that I'm at that into it. He goes even further, like change up your diet. Just eat off the trail for a couple days and then mm-hmm. see what your poop looks like. What do you got inside there? You know, he goes deep. <sighs> yeah, he goes really I had a deep. I had a friend of mine that had to go uh go to the doctor and give a stool sample. Yeah. He ate nothing but peanuts and corn for three days. Like that is that is commitment to a practical joke. You know what I mean? You're risking your own 
health. I mean, how are, what are they going to identify out of that out of that stool sample you give them? You know what I mean? It's all fucking chewed corn up peanuts. peanuts and corn husk. Corn and nuts. Yeah. I have the combat tracking guide by John Hurth. Mm-hmm. Um, that's another uh, excellent go-to. Then we have some crazy uh, army manuals. Well, first I have uh, two component high explosive mixtures. Mm-hmm. Turns out that's how explosions happen is when you put two things that react with each, you know, together. Right. Right. Um, Guerrilla warfare and special warfare operations. There's a million, you know, these are always like your gun show pickups, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, Booby traps from Mm -hmm. the U S army. These are all default department of defense manuals. Uh, Unconventional warfare devices and techniques. That one's a great one. Um, if you are interested in those, now this may get you on a list, so whatever. But I have a giant zip file that is um, is uh, basically tons of Army and Navy manuals. Mm-hmm. And I, will, uh, I have it on my Google Drive. So I can put a link to the Google Drive where any of you can download it and I'll put it in the show comments and on the uh you know on the YouTube channel. So All you right. guys have access to that. Again, eh, you know, you might end up on some kind of list, but you're already listening to this podcast, so you're you're committed, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you're you're already in. Um another one of my favorites, uh US Army Sniper Training Manual. Mm-hmm. Um they talk about ammo. They talk about, uh, you know, like blending in where, you know, people have the right camouflage, but they don't, you know, match the horizon line and things like that. They go into yeah. detail on that, on ranging, stuff like that. A lot of the more old school techniques. Um, Bobby Ackart has a book on EMP uh, preparedness and kind of all the government's findings on that. That's kind of a go-to. Um, Raising Rabbits for Meat by Eric Rapp. It's another great one. Um, I have How to sh- Ride, Shoot Straight, and Speak the Truth. I can never line up things with the <laughs> trying to show them. I don't know. Jeff Cooper, um, that sounds like a, a, a Roy Rogers book. Ah, uh, dude, I got to say, as far as learning to be a man or whatever, that book uh, definitely has it covered. Uh, and then classic uh, military um, military strategy. There is uh, Colonel Dave Grossman on combat. Again, I can't line it up. Mm-hmm. On combat, and he has on killing. Yeah, that was a... That was kind of a messed book. up book. Yeah, that yeah. was wild stuff. That w- that's worth reading. If uh, it if you just helps you understand the kind of psychology of it, right? But I got to say, the world has changed now that there's video games and you know the crazy world we live in, and people are more exposed to this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and last last one in my uh, collection that at least I was willing to carry downstairs. I had, I was unloading the library for a half half hour and dude there was a ton more books these are the ones that made the cut um absolute anarchy by johnny jack so that's another uh you know great go-to that that has a lot of the setting up a uh mutual assistance group and and you know working together and building a community um training up your kind of prepper people uh i believe um Darren mentioned that he had uh, interviewed and talked with uh, Johnny Jacks and Darren Taylor from Mayhem Country Living. And so there's a lot of good stuff there. Um, But hey, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a uh, list of all these books in the uh, show notes. Like I said, I did uh, actually have a um, a uh, shoot a uh, link for my Google drive where you can check out those PDFs. Uh, That might be another great resource for you. I will try and put together a, uh, a list of fiction books that I've been into um, that are kind of useful for it. 
I'm not sure if we're going to end up doing a separate show on fiction books at some point. Uh, Cause there's a lot of great stuff out there that you can actually learn a lot from and, you know, is very enjoyable, but mm -hmm. you know, that's up to you, uh, you know, and we'll see what we can put out there. All right. Other um, before yeah. we wrap up, uh, David Gorsh Gru uh, David Grush came out the other day. Um, uh about aliens so um yeah, big reveal that. lately yeah uh, actually move over coffee this is a job for beer oh whoa um aliens we have them the we united have. states government has alien bodies they have alien craft they're they're uh i'm waiting to have see some more info because this guy is just talking about he knows who does right. it and who's been doing it and what the program's called and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's my tax money. I feel like I should get some of these aliens. You know what I mean? Just send me right. a finger or something. Right. You right. know what I mean? Spread it out. Do it at days like whatever. Yeah, I'm going to try it out. Right. I don't understand. You know, it's this is another one of those things that I have. Another one of those problems I have with big, big government. You know what I mean? You're going you to spend all this money. Spread the wealth a little bit. Right. Give me an eyeball or something. You know, that only sounds right. This is now, our what, money what that we're spending whole, on it. Share a little bit Vegas of the info. Site. Yeah. What or was it Vegas or was it California? This other sighting with the guys with the ones in the backyard. Yeah, that was Vegas. Eight foot tall. That one may. Them. Yeah, that one may be a, a fraud, though. Oh, the jury's still out. There was there was some inconsistencies happening. Uh -oh. So uh, eight foot aliens in their backyard. No video footage, though. I know that's a little odd in a, a modern world here. Yeah, I want to see some aliens. But we do got... see the stuff come out of the sky, though. What about that? Right. With the police. Right. They and... say that that was meteors. Mm, it was possible. weird because there are two that came down at the exact same time at the exact same speed. Little mm -hmm. suspicious. Mm -hmm. Same mm -hmm. trajectory, all that sort of stuff. And then aliens showed up in the backyard. They right. have the video of the, of the meteors or whatever they were. So but no video I of the aliens. I think, like, I think that, you know, the the body cam and like that, you know, seeing the stuff out of the sky, I think that's legitimate. But here's what I wonder. If you're planning on doing a hoax and, oh, there's eight foot bodies in the backyard and this is for real right. and the whole thing, right? Um, they, uh, would you be able to coordinate that? What do you mean? Like that stuff came out of the sky and then you call nine one one right away. Like right. you have the balls all of a sudden, like, you know what? Let's do that. Let's let's, let's do, do a big hoax. Yeah, in. I got a great idea. Like I see planning a hoax and setting the whole thing up, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure you could do because obviously people aren't afraid of calling nine one one or whatever. And who's right. to say you weren't really scared? Mm -hmm. and who's to say you didn't see something? Yeah, right. I don't know. You know, maybe you mm -hmm. didn't. so you probably won't get in trouble. People are like swatting people all the time. Have you well, seen this? They stuff? said the These the videos? police. Yeah, no, I I, I know what you're Crazy. talking about. But they said the the police showed up and they said it wasn't a hoax. But how do they know Why? that? They didn't see them. The cops right. never said they yeah. saw aliens. Well, I believed them. Mm -hmm. that, the, yeah. the cops believed them. So I don't know if that says something about Vegas cops or if it says something about uh uh. You know, the actual event. Maybe something happened. So this guy, though, is a uh, former military, uh, former, um, uh, I, I don't think he was CIA. I don't remember where he was from. But um, he said that aliens have killed people. He said they're, they're people oh. that have actually been killed by these aliens. He said they've actually been in firefights with UAPs and they've found wreckage of, of these crafts. Now this has been, this is, there've been people that have been saying this for a long time. Right, he's not the right. first guy, right? But he's the first guy that says that he has names and, and first people knowledge. that were in yeah. charge of these programs and people that are in charge of these programs. Right. And he said, a lot of these things end up going to corporations hmm. to do research on them. Yeah, and even though they're owned by the government, they're not 
the government isn't in possession of them. Oh, okay. So they've got companies that are studying these things, private the whole companies. whole BARPA industrial, uh, you know. Right, all right. right. All right. So that's I'm there might be more great. info coming out in the next uh, month or two. Are but we I'm, gonna have I'm here to delve, for it, man. Are we going to have to delve into a uh, alien episode? Are I think we, we got to do an alien episode. Because we have yeah. done them. Mm-hmm. But I feel like things are evolving. New info's out. Yeah, right. There's new info. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see. Maybe I, I keep wondering about time travel. I, I feel like we could dig deep in that time travel. You think that has something to do with this? Well, no, I just think that there is that there is people coming from the future, and maybe we could ask them about the aliens. Okay, all right. So maybe they'll have – I bet we can find somebody that says they've traveled back in time, and we could have and them on the podcast. Knew about al- yes, yeah. that is I mean, I probably – there's probably somebody in my neighborhood that, that would say that and, and talk about <laughs> that, it extensively. It. <laughs> extensively. Yeah. You got to get the interesting guy, though, you know? Mm-hmm. So – yeah now so make sure you guys like and subscribe the uh channel yeah we're trying to grow the youtube i you know some of the comments are you know saying that we are a little bit entertaining we're trying right Mm -hmm. kevin puts a lot of effort if you knew the struggle that i went through trying to get kevin's microphone worked out before this show you would understand the sacrifices that we make to bring you quality audio <laughs> and video. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, about five minutes before this podcast started, I was throwing things around Kevin, the, the studio. We're ready here to I was end so the podcast off. right there. I'm like, fuck it, it's done. We're not doing it anymore. There's no more podcast. I can't work with this. It, ah, it, it could get a little hairy. So, you know, I'm just saying there are sacrifices being made. So like and subscribe and uh if you're listening on the podcast, we'd love if you share it with other people, let people know, uh, maybe spread it around with your uh, military buddies or, you know, whoever you think could be into this kind of thing. Cause we really appreciate it. We love doing it. We love having you guys here. You have shows, questions, comments, or concerns. You can email us at prepping at gmail.com. Otherwise, I would say stay safe, and we will talk to you guys next week.